Hello, my name is Mary Copeland and welcome to The Road Ahead. Through a series of guests, we are going to help you navigate your own road ahead as you age. We will help you and your aging parents prepare for your journey. Let's face it, no one wants to find themselves in a crisis mode simply because they did not have access to information well in advance. As the publisher of Compass and Clock, we're going to help you achieve your best future. Today, my guest is Jake Dahlstra. Jake is the Regional Vice President of Life Flight Network, and he oversees Coopville and Port Angeles. Life Flight is a nonprofit, and they are an air transport service for those critically ill and seriously injured. They are also the nation's, or one of the nation's oldest and most respected air ambulance providers. Jake, welcome to the show today. Hi, Mary. Thanks for having us. I'm excited to have you here so that you can educate our viewers on Life Flight. So we're going to kick off the show right there, and you're going to tell us just a little bit. Give us a brief overview. What is the Life Flight Network? Life Flight Network is a not-for-profit air ambulance company. We transport patients with our helicopters and airplanes. Um, our medical crew consists of a nurse and a paramedic that provide the very highest level of care possible for patients. We uh, work with partner hospitals and EMS agencies to transport patients rapidly from a scene of an accident or from a hospital and get them to a hospital where um, a surgeon or a specialist can help save their lives. So when did Life Flight come about and how has it grown over the years? Life Flight Network started in 1978. We started in Portland at Emanuel Hospital. Since then, we've grown um, and we cover the entire Pacific Northwest and Intermountain West, including Alaska. Uh, we are owned by four nonprofit hospitals uh, that form a consortium of our Life Flight Network. And when you say you're um, in the Northwest, how many states does that encompass? We cover four different states, all of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. Okay, and you said Alaska too. Yeah, we do fly up to Alaska to pick up patients. Okay, and if I understood you correctly, each flight that um, takes off has um, a nurse on board mm -hmm. and a physician uh, or a PA? Par paramedic. Paramedic, yep. okay. And then we also provide neonatal transports as well. And Ooh. so with uh, neonatal patients being less than 30 days, we have a neonatal nurse and a respiratory therapist on those transports. Okay. So give us an example. What's a typical call? Um, what happens when somebody calls Life Flight? Yeah, a typical call is uh, there's a, nobody plans to have an emergency, and these are unexpected events. And um, either the EMS agency or the hospital will call into our comm center and request our services. From the time that we get the call until we're up in the air is less than 10 minutes. And then we're, uh, we'll either, either land at the scene or we'll land at the hospital. We'll um, evaluate the patient and place them into our helicopter or into our airplane, and we'll fly them to definitive care. Um, and our goal is to get that patient to that hospital as quickly as possible and as safely as possible. So in the scenario that you just painted for us, you could either be picking up a patient from a scene like a, an accident scene yes. or their neighborhood um, or they could have gone to the, their local hospital and you're um, transporting them from there to a different hospital to take care of their medical needs. Yes and, and in fact most of our business is taking patients from a smaller facility to a larger facility. Okay, Yeah. did not know that. So for our viewers that are listening, um, let's say every single one of them watching right now has medical insurance. Mm -hmm. Is that all they need in order to utilize the Life Flight Network or is there a membership program? How does that all work? It's a really good question, Mary. Um, so every insurance is different. So I encourage everyone to check with their particular insurance to see what their benefits are. Um, n you, you're not required to have insurance or membership to be flown by Life Flight. Life Flight's mission is to transport patients regardless of their ability to pay. Um, but if somebody does have our membership, um, our membership will cover any out-of-pocket cost expense associated with the transport. 
um, regardless of their insurance or even if they don't have insurance. If they're a member, there's no out-of-pocket costs for the transport. Um, and the membership not only covers the individual, but it also covers their spouse or uh, domestic partner and any dependents uh, that they claim on their tax insurance or any elderly uh, f or disabled family members that are living in their home. So I'm going to throw a few questions here at you that weren't ones that we discussed, but I know you're going to know the answers to this. So when you talk about memberships, mm -hmm. um, and it can cover an individual or their spouse or their, um, in their dependents, yeah. we'll use me for an example. I'm married. I have two kids. They're 17 and 18 years old. Does that mean I have a choice when I purchase a membership to buy for an individual or to buy for a husband and wife or to buy for a family? It's a great question. So uh, our membership is $69 and mm -hmm. it covers your entire household. $69 annually? Yep, annually. So you would pay that year after year? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And does the membership cost differ by state or by um, location, city that you live in? No, it doesn't. It's $69. Um, and that covers you throughout the Pacific Northwest and Intermountain West for Lifeline Network. And then we also work with other air medical providers and we reciprocate, which means that if you um, are flown by one of our partner air ambulance companies, then you're also covered as well. Good, because that kind of touched on another question that I had based on what you were saying. So again, we'll use my family as an example. We're traveling and we're visiting family in Ohio, Columbus, mm -hmm. Ohio, let's mm -hmm. say, and something happens. So are you saying that since you're one of the nation's oldest and most respected air ambulance providers that you have partnerships with other air ambulance providers in the nation since you're only servicing the Northwest, mm -hmm. there sounds like there are other providers like your like, like, like Life Flight. So if I needed to utilize an air service in Columbus, Ohio, mm -hmm would be reciprocated? Uh, yeah, unfortunately we don't uh, have a partner in Ohio, but we do. <laughs> Sorry folks. <laughs> <laughs> we do have uh, partners um, throughout the West Coast. So in, in Northern California, Nevada, uh, Utah, Arizona, uh, but unfortunately not in Ohio. So up and down the West Coast, mm -hmm. but not so much in the Midwest or the East Coast. Correct. Okay, so if somebody did need to utilize uh, air transport medical service while they were on vacation um, and they had a membership with you folks that would be not included and Correct. Um, they'll Correct. figure it out with their insurance carrier Correct. how that works yeah okay good to know now in the introduction that I made when I was introducing you to the audience here I had said that you oversee Coopville which is on Whidbey Island yeah and also Port Angeles which is out on the Olympic Peninsula right so does that mean that Life Flight was designed to service more rural type areas? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We, Life Flight Network, we have placed aircraft in rural communities because that's where we're needed the most. Um, when uh, emergency happens, um, getting patients to the larger hospitals, so the hospitals in Bremerton or uh, at the University of Washington or in Everett, uh, with Providence Everett, the quicker we can get the patient to definitive care, so the, the specialized surgeons, the specialized equipment, um, a lot of the hospitals um, on the peninsula, they, they do a great job, but they don't have all the specialists that you may need. If you sustain a heart attack, you're going to need to go to a hospital that has a cardiologist and a cath lab. Unfortunately, on the peninsula or on, on Woodby Island, those services aren't available, and so our job is to get them to that specialized physician with the specialized equipment as quickly as possible. So out in Port Angeles, there's OMC, which is Olympic Medical Center, and in Jefferson County and Port Townsend, there's Jefferson Healthcare. Yep. So do both of those hospital facilities have a landing pad? Yes. And in those particular cases, do you go in by helicopter? Yes, we do. So okay. we have the, in both of those facilities, we have the ability to land right there at the hospital. So if somebody is sustaining a heart attack or major trauma, they need to get to a hospital that has a specialized physician or surgeon. We're able to land right there at the hospital, load the patient rapidly, and then fly them to either Everett or to Seattle or to Bremerton and get them to the care that they need rapidly. Okay. 
So um, another question I was going to ask you is, um, well, it had to do with when you talked earlier about when I asked when you started, and you said in 1978, and mm -hmm. you started in Portland. Yes. Um, when did you start to add on these other towns? Like was Port Angeles and the Olympic Peninsula in the beginning, or are they recent? No, or I, I would say um, our growth really started when um, we started at, in Portland at Emanuel. And then um, what had happened was there was other hospitals that wanted to join into mm -hmm. our network. And, um, and then we also joined with a hospital out in Boise as well. Okay. And we recognized that there was a need for rural communities to have this precious resource inside at, at, the, at that specific community to move patients rapidly. And that's when we started placing helicopters in places to get patients in rural communities to definitive care in larger facilities. Okay. So when we do these wonderful Road Ahead episodes to provide our viewers with um, educational information that they might not have known about. We try to keep them to a certain time limit, so we're almost out of time. What would you like to share with the viewers that we might not have covered? Yeah, I would like to share that we encourage as many people as possible to become members, and what that does is gives you a peace of mind that in, in, a, in, in when an emergency happens or if an emergency happens, that they're not going to have to worry about how much is this going to cost. And really, that's our goal: is to be able to transport patients and get them the care that they need, and have let people have that peace of mind. When that emergency happens, the last thing you want to worry about is price. And really, what our membership does is alleviate any concern about the price of the transport. I hear what you're saying, and I hope, viewers, that you do too. Jake, thank you for joining us today. The information that Jake has shared is life-saving information because I have heard stories where people don't want to call 911 for an ambulance right. because they're worried about the cost. So obviously, if they need to be flown somewhere, they're not willing to do that. They're probably scared. And for $69, you're talking life-saving um, opportunities for your family. And if you go to our website, uh, lifelight.org, mm -hmm. you're able to see uh, it has more information about our membership and how you can sign up for membership. Great. Thank you. Viewers, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode today with Jake and I. Until the next time, have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.